This is a Riptunes radio cassette recorder boombox, or at least a wannabe boombox, because it mimics the styling of the boomboxes of the 1980s, but definitely does not deliver equivalent sound quality. And you may remember seeing something just like this on Techmoan's channel. They're all basically the same thing, but they're sold under many different brand names with minor differences in styling and features. You get an AM, FM, and shortwave radio tuner, a cassette recorder, two built-in speakers, and on the top here is an SD card slot and a USB port for playing MP3 files. And on the side here, it may look like it has a headphone jack, but that's actually an aux input. So those are the basic features of this, but unfortunately it has several major drawbacks. First is the dreadful sound quality of these little speakers. They don't have any kind of bass response to them, even with the bass control turned all the way up. Second is the fact that this is completely mono. Even though it has two speakers, the FM radio tuner and the cassette recorder are both mono. And if that wasn't bad enough, the cassette recorder in this has very bad wow and flutter. You don't even need to measure it. You can hear it when this thing is playing any kind of sustained note. You can hear it warbling and fluttering. Well, let's have a listen. Ooh. Oh dear. So it's a very poor quality mono cassette recorder and mono radio made to look like a 1980s stereo boombox. Definitely not recommended. But I was intrigued when I looked online recently and I saw this. It may look like another version of the same exact thing, but the listing says 2021 upgraded cassette boombox. And they say many people have met the situation that the cassette player eat your tape frequently with other cassette boombox, which not only interrupt your listening moment, but also damage your tapes. We update the cassette player with advanced Japanese mechanism to avoid it never eating tapes. So they're claiming this new version has an upgraded and advanced Japanese tape mechanism in it, which definitely got me interested. Now at first glance, except for the color scheme, they look identical, but when you look closer, there are some minor differences. This one only has AM and FM radio tuner bands. No longer has a shortwave tuner, which is just as well because the shortwave tuner on this could barely pick up anything and it was very difficult to tune in. So it's no big loss. And also on the side, instead of an aux input, it now has a headphone jack. Kind of hard to see but it says phone and it shows a picture of an ear and on the back they both run on four d cell batteries or an ac input but while this older one is voltage selectable this one still runs on four d cells or the ac input but it no longer has the voltage selector switch so i assume in europe and other parts of the world they have a separate 220 or 230 volt version it does come with the power cord but instead to power it I'm going to put in four new D-cell batteries, which feel like they weigh as much as the entire radio does. America's battery experts. Batteries plus. Batteries plus. We got the service. Before we get to that improved cassette mechanism, let's try out the radio tuner. It probably won't come across well on camera, but this thing, to my surprise, is actually playing in stereo on FM. So now instead of being mono, it actually plays in stereo on FM radio. Still doesn't sound that great because of these tiny built-in speakers, and this is with that bass knob turned all the way up, but... It's listenable, and at least it's in stereo. Since this uses a DSP-based tuner, it has that annoying choppiness as you tune across the dial. But once you tune in a station, it sounds fine and it has good reception. Wow. 
classic soft rock. Softrockradio.net. The AM tuner is obviously not in stereo, but it sounds pretty good as well. It also has a Bluetooth mode for playing music from your phone or tablet through this thing's built-in speakers. Next is the digital media playback. So I have my USB thumb drive with some test music on it. And I'll switch it into the USB mode. Of course it has a blue light that lights up. I discovered this not only supports MP3 files, it also supports WMA. That's what's playing right now. There is an MP2 file, an MPEG Layer 2 file playing. And here is an MP1 file, an MPEG Layer 1 file. And again, just like the FM radio, the digital media playback is in stereo. I'll give you a direct hookup sample of that. If your system is in balance, the sound you hear now should come from your left. Now you should hear the sound on the right. Unfortunately, the USB and SD card slots are only for playback, not for recording. So if you're thinking of using this thing to convert your old tapes into MP3 files, you're out of luck. And speaking of tapes, so far we know this thing has a stereo FM radio and the SD card and USB playback is in stereo. But what about the cassette player? Is that in stereo? Well, if we look through the window in the cassette door, we can see a stereo tape head. You can see that line through the middle of it indicating it is a stereo head and it has separate red and white wires coming out of it for the left and right channels. The erase head over here is a permanent magnet but you probably won't want to do much recording on this, as I'll demonstrate later. Now to demonstrate it, I'll give you a direct hookup sample of one of my favorite modern stereo recordings. Slugbug's Computers Again, played from cassette in stereo on this Audio Crazy Mini Boombox. <laughs> Not bad. It definitely is in stereo, but it sounded to me like it was playing a little bit fast. So this would be a good opportunity to check the speed and wow and flutter. Well, it definitely is playing too fast. That's over 2% too fast, but look at that wow and flutter. It's around 0.11%. That's actually really good for a cheap little cassette recorder like this. That's very impressive. But thankfully to adjust the speed you don't need to take it apart because it has this hole in the back here which goes directly into the speed adjustment trimmer in the motor. You can take a small flat blade screwdriver or preferably a non-conductive adjusting tool and stick it in and turn it slightly to adjust the speed until it's correct. Now let me try to adjust that speed down to where it should be. Well that definitely is a lot closer. Actually that's almost perfect. So I'm going to leave it right there. So it's unfortunate that it was playing too fast when I got it. They should really try to calibrate that better at the factory. 
Luckily, as you saw, it was an easy fix. And I'm really impressed with how low that wow and flutter is at around 0.11%. That's actually on par with this JVC cassette deck, which as you can see was quite a high-end model back in its day. One thing that's not so impressive is the recording quality. In addition to that permanent magnet erase head I showed earlier, it uses DC bias, which produces very noisy, weak, and shrill sounding recordings. That was a sample of recording using the tiny built-in microphone, which is right there. Next, I'll give you a brief direct hookup sample from the title track of this vinyl record, which I transferred to an MP2 file on this SD card and then recorded it to cassette tape. And for those who prefer vinyl records because you think they give you pure analog sound, this one is from 1983, so it's 40 years old this year, and it says right on the cover, this record was mixed and mastered digitally. Yeah, that definitely didn't sound very good. But part of the problem is that the recording it makes is so faint that when I play it back on a deck with a level meter, it doesn't even show up. So if they just boosted up the level to where it should be, it would sound a lot better. It would have a lot less noise. Speaking of made in Japan, let's take a look at what this claims to be an advanced Japanese cassette mechanism and compare it to the old version. And at first glance, they look very similar, but if you look closer, there are some notable differences. On this old one, it has a very generic looking mechanism with no markings on it. It does have a metal flywheel, but it's almost paper thin. And the motor may have the Mabuchi logo on it, but you notice it's not stamped into the lid. And besides, Mabuchi has not manufactured these little cassette player motors in over a decade. So anything made today with their name on it is a counterfeit. Now if we look at the mechanism in the new one, it has CSG stamped on it. If that sounds familiar, that's because CSG also manufactures the cassette mechanisms used by brands like Sony, Marantz, TIAC, and Tascam. And it has a TRW motor, also used by all of those brands I just mentioned. And it has a much thicker and heavier metal flywheel, which also helps to reduce wow and flutter. And as for the claim that this higher quality new CSG mechanism is Japanese, I call that unconfirmed. Because with only a three letter acronym to go by, I can't find any information about the company. So I don't know where they're based and where they do their manufacturing. And if you try to search for it, you just get circled back to my own videos and forum posts. So that's no help. And likewise, their claim that it will never eat your tapes is implausible. The only kernel of truth to that is that unlike some really cheap mechanisms, it incorporates a clutch. So when you're rewinding a tape and it reaches the end, instead of straining and squealing and tugging on your tape and possibly causing it to break, the mechanism freewheels. So if you leave it like this, it will not damage your tape. The only thing it will do is run down the batteries. But perhaps to offset the higher cost of the better quality cassette mechanism and motor, it looks like they downgraded the speakers. Because if you look at the ones in the older model, they have nice big magnets on them, while the ones in the new model have very small magnets. Although, to be honest, I don't notice any significant difference in sound quality between them. They both sound like tinny, cheap little boomboxes. I 
I've been really impressed with this little audio crazy boombox. No, it's not perfect, but for only $45 you can't expect it to be. Especially when that's the same price as this far inferior model, which only plays in mono and has much worse cassette playback quality. However, I do wish you could get this attractive 1980s style color scheme on this model. So far, I've only been able to find it in this very boring all-white color. And I would also recommend to Audio Crazy that instead of making the claim that it will never eat your tapes, which they simply cannot guarantee, they should more explicitly mention that it plays cassettes in stereo, like this. There, that's better. And Audio Crazy has other models with the improved cassette tape mechanism, such as this one, although because it only has one speaker, it's mono. Leave a comment if you want me to do a full review of this one. And I think it's great that there is now a viable option for those who want to get into cassette tapes for the first time at a very low price, especially if they're just going to be playing cassettes and they're going to be mostly listening to it through headphones, then something like this would be fine for that. Especially since nearly half a million new pre-recorded music cassettes were sold in the US in 2022 and almost 200,000 in the UK. That's still a small fraction compared to vinyl and CDs, but cassettes are a growing market and it's nice to see new good quality equipment being introduced for it. Mm -hmm.